Okay, it is that time. And I think, uh, I think Jeevan, <clears throat> uh, did some of you work with Jeevan on this? Or has he just done it by himself? Hi, hi, Vishwas. And this is hey, a network issue, so I'll just come back one minute. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Take your time. So today's session, um, I'm going to do a little, kind of my uh, go away gift. And uh, you are going to do, I think Jeevan's uh, planning a presentation of a kind of summary of everything we've covered so far. And the interesting news is that um, we've covered almost everything and some things more than deep. And we're kind of trying to figure out how did that happen? So either, um, either deep offered very little <laughs> or, um, or this offers a different focus altogether. And, and uh, I like to believe it's the, the latter. Oh, frozen. Oh, okay, you can hear me now? Yeah, okay, so um, uh, I like to believe that it's the latter, that um, I've been really been able to focus my energy into deciding what to cover and covering that. And uh, we had, uh, out of the nine sessions, I think uh, there was an overflow of only maybe one or two sessions. Otherwise, we've covered a lot. Um, so uh, we kind of kicked about that, but I will be doing uh, something I've never done in deep today. So that's the extra piece. And uh, Jeevan's going to give us a rundown of what we've covered so far. Yeah. So can I, yes, thanks Vishwas. Uh, can I share my screen then? Whenever you're ready. Sure. And you are going to decide how this whole thing is conducted, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Vishwas, are you, is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah, oh. it is visible, yeah. Yeah. So let, let me just present it. We have not used Zoom sharing before. There's some technical issues, please let me know. Yeah. So uh, again, this is a brief review of all the nine class of experiential learning. Uh, good evening. Uh, I will be sharing uh, uh, like one slide will represent one session. So I have some points to share and I shall share it. And then uh, rest of you can pitch in and maybe even Vishwas also if, if needed, you can also add some, uh, some points to it. So let me start. Uh, the session one, uh, this is the key part that I remember that learning is different from information. So there's lots of information uh, outside in the world today and even in schools also we learn a lot of information but that's not learning so what is learning uh, learning is about experience and importantly as trainers we have to offer experiences that create a dis uh, disequilibrium so that students are pushed out of their comfort zones and learn new things discover new things and i think that creating like having experiences that create discipline was, was the main theme running throughout the different uh, sessions so yeah so yeah so before i go to the next slide any questions on these parts any thoughts reflections or i can move on to the next slide fine so i'm assuming there are no questions i'll go to the next slide so this is how it's going to be. Uh, there's nothing 
more fancy than this. It's more about some points and some of the thoughts on it. So, so uh, if you want to add, please feel free to jump in at any point of time. Uh, if I'm not hearing anything, then I'm assuming that things are fine. I'll go, I'll go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, so, Jeevan. Yes, yes. Uh, the first session also had the introductions. Did you mention that? Yes, yes, it had. It had. Yeah. Uh, we introduced uh, each other and we right. got. It's an important part of the whole game because that's when we first encountered each other. Definitely. And um, just think of that moment uh, when you started. And I had used a particular methodology that you remember what it was. Uh, can I put in here? Because I've been using the same thing for all my other students until now. I ask them what they want to know about me instead of me telling me about myself, right? So that's creating much better relationship than every in every uh, class I'm attending right now. So uh, thank you for that. That's the point that I took the first in the first session. That's the first thing I took out. So I've been using it since. So thank you for yes, that. Yes, we were asked to talk about ourselves, our work, uh, what we like. Right, Ishwas? Correct. Yeah. Go ahead. Ishwas. So the next session. Uh, yeah, we were talking about the learning zones, how we grow from comfort to groan to growth and panic. And this is where the facilitator has to moderate it. Uh, so there's an element of groan that happens before the growth. Uh, but uh, if you push a lot of things, then becomes the, the learners go into, into a panic. Uh, and uh, yeah, the flow learning model was very interesting. It was about uh, covering all the aspects of learning, of thinking, doing, feeling, and watching. And, and how is it to, related to learning? I'll share the next slide. So thinking is more about abstract learning. So, so all the abstract concepts that we learn in textbooks, usually at school, uh, that is about thinking. So we, we look at a concept, we think about it, and we learn. That's a, that's a uh, traditional way. Uh, the next part is doing. So we have some act to experimentation. So whatever we learn in a book, like some small experiments that we do, uh, students do at a science class, for example. So that, that is an active experimentation part. Then uh, uh, feeling, this is a very concrete experience. So this was example I remember was, uh, was just just reading about, about mountains is abstract learning, but going and visiting a, a mountain and seeing how it is. So that where we have the feeling, the rest of the content experience, and also, sorry, and also the watching, which is more of a reflective observation. So, so we reflect on the on the on the concrete experience we have. All these are in a cycle. So each builds upon the other, uh, uh, and based on these learning models, we have different styles of accommodative, assimilative. If others can pitch in here, I don't remember all the styles. But, but we can we can find ourselves at uh, different uh, different scales of that on a learning model. And uh, to create an experience of disequilibrium, the facilitator must know what he or she can control and what he or she cannot. So can control is what happens inside the classroom, uh, how we talk uh, to the students, how we present ourselves. But there are many things in, internal to a student, uh, maybe some, some, some difficulties at home uh, uh, and uh, that comes in. So we should know what we can control and what we cannot control and, and whatever we can control, we should be able to maximize that. But it's very important to know that. And also uh, when I talk about control, I remember the whole, uh, maybe it was the first session, but it was more about that whole Kung Fu Panda, like, control is actually an illusion and we have to uh, uh, like like letting go of the control I think it's it's more important we have to become more of a, of a facilitator more on the sidelines uh, and uh, be comfortable with the different learnings that happen at different paces so there was a photo of people playing a basket a base cricket and, and, and another person just observing it and, and both were learning. So we have to be comfortable with the different styles of, of learning that happens. Yep, so that's my point. Any any thoughts, any questions, any, any, any additions to it? So one thing is I think the learning model is 
called C K O L B. I'm just clarifying uh, clarifying that. Oh, and sure, think, sure, sure. And I think the the control and no control was definitely the highlight of the session. And we realized that we can control how we are, the environment. Uh, we can plan what we want to do, but mm. we have no control over their feelings, thoughts, and what will trigger them. You know, that was the highlight for me. And uh, whose model was that? Do you remember? I don't remember. Others can. Add. I remember the picture. It was, but... uh, Colin Beard. Colin Beard. Six dimensions. Right. Colin. Colin Beard. Six dimensions. And his books are available on Amazon. So, okay, there was another. Uh, I also told, told, sorry. Go not ahead. so sure, but maybe this is the late time when you mentioned uh, plan, 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 and then throw away the plan and just get into actions. And, uh, that that is. Yep. Uh, the other thing was I also told you the story. And those five elements, five pieces, objectives, setting. Uh, uh, yeah, we started this session with the elements in the life of educator and myself personally found it very insightful. And it was, I think, a great guidelines for us on a field also related later to the six I mentioned, what we have control over and what we not. What are the five elements? It was context setting. Was that it? Which was context setting? Objective, environment, uh, resources. Mm. Audience. Audience. Ah, oh, you didn't do your homework. <laughs> and facilitator. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, I think what I did uh, differently for that one was I, I threw a, I put a whole bunch of questions out there that you can ask, uh, you can add to that list of questions. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else has to add anything? Fine. So I'll go to the next slide then. So this session was very definitely like I think one of the most intensive sessions that I remember. So invitation to learning and challenge by choice. Oh, sorry. I remember these two concepts because uh, they were very exciting. Like uh, you, you said that uh, you know, like learning must be an invitation. Like like how we present ourselves outside, and uh, uh, it should not like that. I think the whole universe, the whole point was of letting go of control and. Uh, inviting them to learn at their own pace and a challenge by choice. You shared a photo of a girl on a mountain trip who uh, was slowly climbing up and up, but, but, but it was a choice for her to increase the challenge. However, there was a challenge element uh, involved. So, uh, yeah, I found these two concepts very fascinating on this session. Um. Adding to it, this is a time when I also found, uh, you know, setting boundaries and uh, creating community and also giving them choices and all these things what uh, gave the most uh, results for me. That's where, which I, that's the one which I took the most in this. And I think this was, uh, like, I think, um, yeah. Must be seen. We, we talked about like we saw the dead poet society and we realized we saw that mm. how how optimism uh, should be the main thing a facilitator should always have right. and uh, how by inviting again and again you build trust so right. your so intention whatever our our personal difficulties when we go inside we should always uh, you know go with the energy and, and the classroom will reflect that energy Intention, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I was in, I I I interrupted that point. Someone is making. Please continue. Uh, we also saw uh, the discussion on uh, the three questions like what, so what, and now what. How you would look at Next situations. Slide. 
Yeah, yeah. Was in season uh, session. Session four, four. No, no, it was uh, so that what was and now what? Session three. Okay, okay. I, I so what and now what? Session three. Yeah, it was like so what. Yeah. What, so what, now what? Yeah. Was that okay. session three? Yeah. No, I remember yes. session four. I remember. No. no. Okay. It was session three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. That was uh, with the uh, geography yeah. classes. Uh, so we went into detail much later, but I introduced you to the idea of what, so what, and now what in session three, and then we right. the final model in detail later. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Vishas shared the experience of get to how to what process so what like that five points you had explained on that. Okay. Yeah. You gave that example of the geography class that you yeah. took. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. We had the breakout room and how will we class take? seven. That happened in the third session. Right, right, right. Yeah. That was very interesting. Like students yeah. were beyond their levels and this this like whole curriculum was yeah. Okay. Right. And yeah, there was last thing you said that when the opportunity is right, invite, there might not be any another chance. And apparently some of you did practice it or have been practicing it. Cool. Yeah. One thing, yeah. One thing highlighted was that Good intentions are not always good invitations. Mm -hmm. And uh, your invitation, well, if it is not necessarily that it is not accepted now, but it will be accepted later. So that connection of intention and invitation and its immediate reflection or the later, that was something very interestingly happening. For me, something which affected me as a career when shift in me. That's why I remember that very strongly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I love uh, that as Jeevan's going through this and, and you know, when we were talking about it, I said, Jeevan's going to take only 20 minutes? Wow, that would be brilliant. I wonder how he's going to do it. Uh, and uh, the natural process takes over and what's really nice to hear is, uh, uh, how people are chipping in and saying, yeah, that was really uh, important for me in my learning and in my practice. So just keep that going because that's really what um, we need to know. Yeah, keep going. So there was another piece. I don't know if you talked about it. We also did the planned and emergent learning thing. That some people plan their learning and a lot of people just say, and then I did that Egyptian dance in through one year and out through the other. No, uh, was that a warrior, sage, and sleeper? And it was basically self-directed learning. Yep. Yes, uh, you did the learning style inventory and uh, the four. Uh, yeah. So, so, so there was this graph of plan learning and emergent learning. Correct. Correct. We also did that. So to know that uh, as educators, we can all often uh, uh, desire that our students come planned and come with uh, intention and come with, okay, you know, uh, the first question very often will be, so what problems can we solve today? And everybody, and you encounter silence from your audience, which means they've really not thought about much in between. And um, we want people to journal and we want people to reflect, but people will make the choices that are important for them. And uh, to be okay with it because uh, that's a no control area. And just do everything possible and make it possible for them to do it, but um, be careful that we don't judge them on the basis of that because then that changes the relationship. Yeah, that four quadrants, warrior, sage, adventure, sleeper. That Correct. Quadrant. Correct. Yep. And I think Vishwas, for me personally, I think that was a very strong statement that you made like, uh, I will invite you to do journaling and assignments, but I won't judge you if you don't do it. However, definitely you will benefit more. And uh, I think that the, I that helped me to to really come for all the class. I know I do wish that us going through all these uh, PPTs and I saw a lot of materials. I do, you know, I, I wish I had 
done it, but there were some reasons I was not able to do the assignments. But but I think it was very important point that you made, and and that helped the learning to happen at everyone's own pace. So mm. so thank you for that. Right. So here's um, here's an invitation, and you can write it down if you want. Yeah. But um, at the end of today's session, uh, over the next one week. And I'm not going to put this up as a journal entry in classroom or I might, I might just say journal and then just remind you about what I'm saying now. And the journal assignment is choose any one of the principles or the things that we've covered over the past 10 weeks. Anyone that was, that has been important to you and share the story of how it has affected or changed the way you see what you do or do what you do. Sure. And even one is enough. Yeah? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Shwas. Uh, shall I move to the next slide? Yes, please. All yours. So, yeah, so session four again was very intensive. We discussed how our behavior is based on social conditioning over the years. So there was this nice graph of uh, conditioning and then uh, uh, conduct that, uh, that happens. So often we, our, we, are, we are reactive and, uh, and what we see is and like, like that's an objective experience and that's also a subjective experience. Like the subjective experience is shaped by our past. And uh, and uh, we we assume that past will repeat itself, so we behave in a very impulsive way generally. So hence we need to be very mindful of a contact. And how to be mindful of a contact? Uh, that, that okay. Before that, I think, I think to be mindful of a contact is is very important to take the pause before we see and react immediately to some situations. It's very important to take a pause, a pause, take a deep breath, reflect, and then. Our, our 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 contact is quite painful, and this was a very fascinating quote of Carl Gibran: "Children are not your children; they are the daughters of life's law for itself." So, so uh, again, I, it was quite fascinating. Like, I think it's all about letting go of control. So that 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 came across in all the sessions very well, and uh, yes, and then we talked about how exams create a lot of pressure for our students. Uh, uh, and uh, to let go of that, we need to create a non-threatening environment for children. There were many components to it, which I saw, but I was, I was not able to like completely uh, put it here. But I invite others to add like how we can create a non-threatening environment. Or please build on these points. I think the first thing was the three C's. Uh, as I remember, it was conditioning, consciousness and conduct. Mm -hmm. So it was the three C's and uh, that was an amazing uh, thing. Uh, I, I kind of used it in one of my sessions and uh, the participants really liked it because it made sense because I come into a classroom with a previous conditioning and then um, uh, what is my present consciousness there at that time makes a lot of difference in the conduct. So uh, I think that was a great uh, thing for me. Yeah. Yeah, you can credit me with that model. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, here we did one more uh, integrated thematic instruction model as well in session four. Susan Kowalik. Yeah, Susan Kowalik. Okay. We did brain, head, heart, and hand thing. Brain, body compatible elements as well. Right. And and there were two two things which you said, which Vishwas, which I liked the most. One was most conversation end in thirty seconds. That was one line, and second, we build connection by telling stories. Yep. Yeah. This is this is what I took from that session. That's it. Oh, can you remind me uh, to tell you a story today? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Fine, so I'll move on to the next slide. So yeah, Pais, this was fascinating. It was like a, like a radio jockey and how we, uh, how we 
affect and how we can affect an activity uh, physical intellectual emotional and socially and how one element affects others so there was this pipes and balls game and how we can change one one element based on based on the objective or or what you want to do in class interesting and uh, then yeah and the facilitator makes the adjustments based on what she wants uh yes and also it's very important the same concept can also be used to create a safe environment for groups that's also uh, critical uh, groups feel like a lot of sharing happens and physically they must be safe uh, uh, they should not feel left out any people must not left out of any so yeah this uh, others who can please So, just one little piece I want to add here. Uh, just a reminder that the pies thing um, applies in a lot of places, and you'll find connections to that almost everywhere. I spoke about it uh, on that day only in the context of two things. One was uh, safety, and the other was how you can tweak uh, uh, activities and. experiences that you throw at your audience uh, depending on what you want to get out of it so uh, and uh, you you'll find I, i think the more you look at it and i think that my blog has an article or maybe i put it in the folder already uh, try trying to describe how it can be used and applied and um, i'm beginning to uh, in my own work i'm beginning to see that as a really a uh, wonderful tool uh, to use when we are thinking design when we are thinking of how we are going to present something um just playing with those sliders of that equalizer i just thought i would just kind of restate that definitely just like even for me also uh, before coming to the session i have heard of this concept of pies from play for peace at the quest we had done some activities and but it was mostly in relation to safety and it was very interesting concept uh, but but you your session introduced me to how pies can also be used when we do activities for learning so yeah it's, it's a fascinating concept and it covers a whole range of of what happens in a classroom physically intellectually yeah. uh, even in relationships I mean, all you got to do is to say something that triggers somebody's emotional state, and then it becomes a physical challenge because they start wanting to beat you up or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you can credit me with that model as well. Sure, definitely sure. Yeah. Uh, um, there was also a slide in this session. What I have to stay mindful about, or what I'm mindful about, and I remember that there was a list of questions. and whatever slide pop and then later i was in my own notes i was thinking whenever i'm going to uh, run the program first i'm going to ask myself this question oh great nice yeah i uh, i you know a lot of us don't in when we are in practice we don't think about these things we some things we do and somebody just asked me a question and said okay you're teaching us all this what is it that you do and each time i look at it Uh, I realize that there's a lot of all the principles that we've talked about. There's challenge by choice, uh, you know, uh, at play in that list. Uh, there's invitational education. There's pies in operation. There's uh, brain body stuff. Uh, you know, almost everything comes in there. And um, uh, I didn't know I was doing all that till I actually wrote it down. And I was so excited when I put that list. down i couldn't believe that that's what i did but um, it was fun putting it down and i think people found it useful so yeah i'm so glad so that's another thing uh, for your journal entry monica yep go ahead jeevan i'm done next one yes it, then we were talking about community and how you see classrooms are groups and we just see them as you know like a go teach and come back but they are actually we should start looking uh, 
our classroom from a point of view of community. And what is the community? Uh, it must have a membership. It must uh, have some shared emotional connection, and they influence each other. Like the community influences the individual, individual influences the community, and it's an integration and fulfillment of needs. And it's a responsibility. It's our responsibility as facilitators and teachers to uh, to 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 build a community in the classroom through the various activities that we do, and and how we conduct ourselves. And why is it important? Because uh, this ACL concept also is also very interesting. School is a social space and learning is a social process. So it's like this, this I think uh, it's more about stepping away from that, that we have exams, we have marks, we have activities, there's curriculum, there's content. I think Vishwas does not like the word, sorry. Vishwas uh, did not like the word uh, content a lot. Uh, he never actually preferred like this. He felt Learning actually happens uh, as uh, as a social, you know, it's a, it's a social space where people discover, and that happens only when when we feel as a, I mean, when when you build that that uh, that community sense, and that that takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it doesn't happen even over three four days for a classroom. It takes uh, yes. Uh, the others can please add points. So I think um, there were like three questions that um, Vishwas kind of, uh, you know, asked, uh, I mean, said that, you know, this is, these are the questions you can ask. That is, why am I here? The orientation, who are you? The trust building and uh, what are we doing? Goal clarification, because I kind of used that uh, with my team in one of our meetings and it really really worked it really helped them to you know come closer together um, you know trust each other as well uh, as well as uh, understand uh, you know what as a team we've got to deliver so uh, that really kind of helped uh, me personally so I think uh, that kind of stuck uh, yeah. a oh. lot just remember, you got to keep doing it in every session. Just yep. because they felt happy on a particular day doesn't mean they've made it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, will, uh, yeah, so I I do ask them, I think they they want me to do like once in a month, uh, kind of thing, so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when the group wants continuity is a sure shot indication that something exciting happened for them. Yep. Just like you don't want to finish the session today, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Jeevan, go on. Yeah, no, no, yeah. please, please, uh, add I points. Have, I have one thing to say here. Uh, Vishwas, you said something about the three-day phenomenon. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You talked about the day three phenomenon. So I am, I don't remember exactly what was that day three phenomenon. Okay, so uh, what I said was in my experience, um, and not all of us get that kind of time, but if you're doing uh, outdoor stuff and education stuff, and even if you have um, um, three days continuously, even if it's a couple of hours with any group, um, day one is usually what's going on? Why am I here? Uh, why are you making us do all these silly things? Day two is, ah, I see what you mean. I'm beginning to get it. And day three is, wow, this is fun. I mean, uh, can we go on? Okay. And uh, that's how it usually pans out. And if you get more than three, then, then you're just damn lucky. Because uh, after day three is when what we call transference can begin to happen, which is the next workshop that I'm doing uh, that you probably got a message about. That um, there's, how do we, I mean, if the intent of all education is to, is to get our students to apply what is being learned in their lives and not just for itself, then uh, we, we need to start thinking about what to do in order for that to happen. And it's probably the least thought about thing by educators because we get so caught up in delivering content that um, 
uh, we forget the context that they're in and how it can be and could be applied. So kind of bringing context before content so that content becomes more powerful. Anyway, that's, um, I don't want to yeah. give away a real uh, so so Here you said, says, you said something about con content that if you use the content in the same way, then you are not creating any change. Like the content is, yeah, that is what I like. Ah, I see some good things, some stupid things. I mean, I don't know, but uh, it makes sense at that point. Uh, yes, I think, I think, just you mentioned that uh, uh, though you have, you have taken similar classes, like similar topics for different batches, uh, each time when you do it, you build in, like your, your experience uh, uh, changes the way you deliver the, the same topic. So it will never be the same. Yes. Like the concept may be similar, but, but your experience builds it and, you know, so like that is what we also have to bring to our classes, uh, though we may take the same sessions uh, regularly, but we have to add value to this in our experience. Right. I think the way I put it was that life has happened in between for everybody. So why do we assume it's the same kid or the same uh, adult in that classroom? So kind of that conditioning piece plays up so much that maybe if we became a little more conscious of it, the way we present ourselves would be different. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. Yes. So Cynthia, please uh, keep practicing it. Apply it as often as you can. And especially since you are working in the corporate world, uh, you know the unresolved words that in the model Yes. Uh, if you can put your finger on that and say, okay, uh, my team seems to be here with it, then you know exactly what to do about it. That stage will, uh, so if they're if they're feeling apathy, then you know what you have to do. Sure. Yeah? Hello. Yes, Jeevan. Yes. So next one, uh, yeah, it's about reflection. The whole session was how we reflect, how we process and how it is challenging due to various reasons. Like we, we ask some questions, it could be perceived a different way. Mm. Uh, uh, generally as individuals, not all of us are comfortable with sitting down and reflecting and, and uh, to, uh, so there are, I think there were numerous challenges that came across uh, when we looked at to conduct effective session, uh, processing sessions. And how then we talk about how to do it so it depends a lot on the questions that are asked. Can be open or close-ended, close-ended, which gets a very straight answer, uh, uh, very direct answer. So like information is there, like we, we get an immediate answer, like uh, it's almost like yes or no, but on that, building on that, it could be, did you, uh, 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 I don't know. Jeevan, build, sorry? let's try it. Here's a practice round. Yeah, yeah, ask sure, sure. Me, ask me a closed question. Okay. Uh, did you understand this, uh, the previous sentence? Oh, sorry. Did you? Oh, you're doing great, great, great. You're, you're yeah. Doing yeah. Did you understand this, this uh, previous point on uh, reflection? Uh, uh, there... No, no. Now, yes. convert that to an open-ended question. Okay. Uh... And your guiding factor is what you want to know. So uh, why do you, why were you not able to understand any whether any specific words that is causing some difficulty for you? Uh, what do you understand on, from on. the? Um, any doubt you have? In this? Oh, you use a scalpel. You have so, any doubt in this point? Short, sweet, simple. What do you <laughs> not understand? What is your understanding of reflection? Ah, nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So just being able to do that will completely change uh, how we look at uh, the whole reflective process. And mind you, I've been doing this for so long, but I discovered it when I, on that day when we were talking, I said, wow, this is brilliant. We can actually learn how to, if we, if we keep bumping our heads with a closed question and we don't get an answer, all we've got to do is to flip it a little and figure out how to make that closed question an open uh, question and uh, something quite different begins to happen. 
Thank you for the discovery. This session helped me a lot. Actually, I used to wonder why I'm not getting the answer what I wanted. Then <laughs> I realized, like, I'm trying to differentiate between those two. Actually, uh, becoming more aware of what I'm asking. So mm. yes, now I'm getting uh, more answers than before. Now the problem is you have to decide what to do with those answers. Yeah, that is the. <laughs> I'm there in that place actually. I'm getting uh, responses now. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> See, right. that is kind of similar experience. Even I have is uh, when I'm uh, facilitating groups that are working on a particular task, and uh, sometimes there are these awkward silences. Uh, you know, when you ask a question, and then I realize maybe I've asked a close-ended question, so I'm not getting a like I'm not getting what i want from the group so then i have to rephrase the question make it an open question and then i then it starts flooding in right so sure uh, short indication that's yes. your dipstick check or your temperature or your you know the thermometer when your group goes silent and cold <laughs> you know you messed up somewhere and it's, yes, it's not it's about um, them it's about us no yeah Okay. Cool. Nice. Next one. Uh, yes. Uh, we uh, here is where I remember this what so what. Huh. So we we use so how to process it. We use a six step approaches for this reflection experiences. Very sequential. So first we we review our experience. Then we remember it. Then we identify the impact it had on us. Then we summarize it. Uh, then we 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 maybe we also apply it to our daily life. And then we commit to follow. Uh, there was a nice diagram at like it was a funnel, and and we just filter it. Each each like 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 uh, that that commit part comes at the end of the funnel, and review and remember part comes at the bottom. So like the, like the discussion becomes very focused as we go down this funnel. Uh, and the, the process here is what, like, what is the description of the reflection? So what? So how can it apply or relate to my daily life? And uh, now what uh, is the action plan? So this was my understanding. Uh, others can also please elaborate more on this. And uh, then we also talked about the reflection process where uh, we can front load a question. Uh, 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 and then share or create that experience related to it, then reflect on it. So front load can be some quick question or some uh, uh, just a general intro question to put in the concept. Like for example, if it's communication, we can talk about uh, what are your experiences of, uh, of communication. So they are hooked into it and then maybe share a story around communication or do some, like, some some activity on it and then reflect on it so this 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 was one technique uh, which i i remember from the presentation yeah so yeah very important we have uh, discussions which are uh, detached from specific uh, some very specific outcomes so if we go with an expectation that this discussion must lead to this outcome Sometimes you may get stuck. Uh, it's, it's important to be open to the, all the points that we get from a group. Uh, yes, uh, at the end of the, so that makes the reflection process more, uh, more enriching uh, and uh, more open. Yes. Yeah, others please. I, I didn't your... use the word open to outcome. So, uh, where, uh, ah, yes. and also to, uh, uh, I have experienced this, it's the silence uh, which is there, this pause, when you ask a question or when you have uh, delivered a story or something, uh, it's this pause which is very important to let the uh, audience, uh, the participants uh, um, think and reflect because it takes some time to process and uh, one shouldn't be in a hurry. So uh, that that has been very meaningful for me, and also Vishwas used uh, told us to repeat those uh, short, simple, <laughs> sharp, and uh, uh, sweet, right? He told us to repeat. no sweet, 
<laughs> short, sweet. simple, sharp, and simple, sweet. sharp, sweet. It's it's very simple these four words, but uh, it's it's very effective. I think uh, it kind of has stayed on in my head. Yeah. Yeah. For for me, uh, this session was very important because one thing which I learned is that generally when I get the data, sometimes I get carried away with that particular data, and coming back to the group is very important, which sometimes I don't. i get stuck with data so here what i have learned is that now what I have to do with that data which i have got and how i have to get back to the group how that one data can be used for the entire group which is what i have to practice more which is what is i learned from this session yes there were also the levels of debrief that you discussed a uh, group focus then interpersonal i forget the third and fourth but levels of de debrief also right and i had said that um, interpersonal uh, do you know while we are going through this learning phase to if you're working with a group or a classroom or whatever to focus on group questions first yeah. then interpersonal that means interpersonal. what happens to people and to stay away from the intrapersonal which is that whole tunneling that we go through and we say oh my god the only two people in the room are that person and me and that can get very scary not only for that person because then it becomes a hot seat very often um and everybody else gets lost so just to be careful that you don't uh, get into that space because that's more a kind of a therapeutic one on one piece that emerges as a result of group experience and if an opportunity presents itself then take it aside don't do it in the presence of the group uh. i think um Uh, when vaishnavi and me were having that chat i said you know this was pretty much a um, intra personal conversation and i used that whole uh, process the sequence to get to uh, what she was trying to say remember that yeah when we start getting when we start getting connected uh, with that child actually uh without our knowledge they start sharing and all these things will happen like we won't know when we will come to that point actually true so uh how do we know that where to stop like uh, we, without our knowledge might be we would have got into like <laughs> it's so i think <clears throat> at that point in time probably one of the <clears throat> one of the better ways of doing it is um uh you know manjula i hear what you're saying uh, can we talk about this later okay i just did it you know what i'm saying right so i got it i got it uh the conversation and you you find a place for it later uh will that work for kids also like i mean will they be able to hold on to it and yeah, well going by what varun is doing his head's going to fall off if he keeps shaking it like that go on varun give an example of what you were doing uh, <laughs> that, uh, we do it in pathshala almost every time uh, where if there's any issue with uh, any student especially if it's something uh, personal we don't uh, discuss it in front of anyone we take them to our room we'll say if we are busy in such some cases uh, Uh, we are handling some something emergency then we say can you wait for a while can we talk a little later in the afternoon or something and they usually wait uh surprisingly kids are much more mature sometimes than the adults so they usually wait they wait for uh, their turn they ask you then again they'll come and ask you can we talk right now then you can just uh, then we just go out we just go to uh, the place and we just have a conversation so generally it normally works it generally works and kids are much more uh, they they are much more patient sometimes 
And I think um, the important thing to remember is if you have committed to taking it out of classroom and away from the public space, and that as educators, we remember to get back to that kid. And at that point in time, so uh, you know, you meet that kid, the kid may have forgotten very often. And you say, hey, uh, Manjula, you wanted to say something, you wanted to have a chat, do you want to have that chat now? And they might choose to uh, begin it there, or they may have forgotten it because it was important at that point in time, and it's not so important anymore, and that's fine. So what you did was gave a damn good invitation and they just felt like, no, it was not important anymore. And to be okay with it. Sometimes you say, yeah, but you said you wanted to talk. Now, why are you not talking? Ah, don't go there. That's the choice that we are offering at all times uh, when we are working with people that they find the energy to bring it up for conversation. We just open that window of opportunity, if you want to call it that. Does that answer? Yeah, that uh, answered. But sometimes it so happens with my son, actually. He wants me to do it then, then and there only. Like. Oh, you're very lucky then. He... <laughs> my son says, hey, can we talk about it later? And we never get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> my son will not leave me, actually, till he gets it. Like, so. Right. so take a few deep breaths and get into it. Because uh, I tell you what, you do it a few times and uh, uh, it will make a world of a difference to that relationship. Yeah. That, uh, uh, that I think is a mark, uh, would, be, would become a mark of authenticity from our end. That when, uh, in your example, when, uh, when he wants his mother and the mother makes the time, then... Uh, that's that whole process of building the relationship and making it more meaningful. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Jeeves. No, I want a bullshit box in there. Oh, uh, you need yeah. All good? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, so the next session that we was on. Uh, uh, was on adventure waves. So this was the Tesla part of energy, frequency, uh, and uh, so here, uh, uh, adventure wave, you have to understand the group's energy and based on it, you have to increase the engagement, keep them engaged at their own pace by building trust, setting boundaries. Though Vishwas, you did not like the word trust, uh, but theoretically it sounded well. So by building trust, setting boundaries, uh, doing activities, facilitating discussions, doing reflection, and also closing very well. Uh, I remember a story shared about how you took students for a mountain uh, excursion trip. Uh, and the first thing that they did when they went out of the bus was just to, just like they just, they were the bus for a long time and you just gave them the space to just run, out, run around the moment they reached the, the, the campsite. Uh, so the first one day was just about just like activities, making us comfortable. And so we went, we have to go at that pace. So that was that adventure wave. And it should be an adventure, that whole learning and engagement should be an adventure. Uh, I think there, yeah, so there, there's some problem. So based on that, uh, there is a five Ds of design. Uh, diagnose, design, de deliver, debrief, detach, uh, and uh, uh, like like diagnosis. What's like what is the need? Then we design based on the need, uh, and then there's a whole deliver part. There's a, there's a reflection part. Detach. I'm not 
completely, I don't completely remember. Programs can be recreational, educational, and redirectional and developmental. So for me, the highlight was this, this amazing corporate story you shared uh, of, uh, of engineering a dysfunctional team to work together. So they went through this whole phase, like they had uh, some, some unknown, like some undercover people going in, you know, from, uh, from Europe office to a US office. Uh, they observed them, understood what the problem was, and then uh, a very interesting way, like they got the Roman tunics, then but finally they went to a cabin uh, from from a um, main airport, and then they had to do an activity to cross the river in seven days for, to, for the departure flight, and they had everything with them. So the whole idea was to make them work together in a very and. and um. I'm just curious uh, if, if this part of that program, you know, I, uh, my, um, I started with trying to tell you why conflict was being included in the course. And I'm just curious to know, to find out how you received it and if it makes any sense to you and uh, whether it's relevant uh, as part of uh, what we do. So, so Vishwas, I actually had a live example of a conflict at work. And then uh, I saw my, my, my senior using the same part, like what is at stake? Like, should we really push for it or not? And then we try to address it in a different way. You know, like uh, I, I saw it working and I understood that whole concept of um, high stakes. Like just think about the stakes involved. Like is it really worth fighting for? So there, are, there are some fights that we choose and some fights we do, we do not choose. So it was very interesting. I, I saw that playing out. Right. And uh, to remember that the objective when you encounter a situation like that is to dismantle that triangle. But and you can, and you can do that. triangle to discovery triangle, discovery circle. Correct. So uh, using the, um, uh, using the idea of exploration and discovery, like we were trying, I don't know, uh, the shoelace problem, did we solve it by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. You, so, you shared the uh, Madonna's uh, Maradona. Thing, football without tight shoelaces. Yeah. yeah well, well, that's not the solution, really, because you can't. Uh, I mean, it means that you've got to back off with every kid who doesn't have his shoelaces tied now because you've seen Maradona. Um, no. I don't think we resolved it. We did, Vishwal. Oh, you are the kid. That's fine. Then. No, you asked me, Vivi Vishal, ask me a question. Did, did we? Did we resolve it? Uh, I'm asking. Did we? Wow, really? You were the kid, right, Vishal? Yes. You were. Oh, oh, fine. Oh, you're playing that game with me, huh? <laughs> no, I don't think we resolved it. Really? I don't know. No, actually, I don't remember. No, I don't think we did. Uh, yeah, I don't think we resolved. I think I think we came to the point that we need to explore and uh, be curious to know why yeah, why it is like that, why it is not tight. Right, right. That is where we came actually. Right, right. And stay in that exploratory space. And in that context, I uh, talked about the wow really approach, uh, where you get the other person to. So you show your curiosity, and you get the other person to uh, kind of tell you what their story is. And there's always a story why somebody is not doing something or doing something. In fact, we changed the focus of uh, the resolution of the problem, Mr. Fro, to make him to tie the lace, why and explore and possibility of falling and even connecting that his right to explore in his life. So a shift of the frame was uh, Absolutely right. So just shifting your frame from a world of perfection to a world of discovery. True. Nice. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, which was, I want to say one thing. Uh -huh. The last session was really important for me. Might not be for kids whom I separate, but for me as a person, it was uh, very important to how I have to grow and come out of my inhibitions and my apprehensions, many things. When you know what uh, what you are and how you deal with conflict, I guess life gets Who's much you? better. Who is you? I, when I know what my conflict is and how I have to deal with, 
I guess my life gets much easier. I feel that way, and I have been very happy after the session. Actually, I have. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for that one. Cool. Is that it, Jeeves? Yes, Vishwas. So thank you for that opportunity. Okay. So damn it, last session. You mean we can't be late? <laughs> Okay, so hey, wonderful job! Thank you so much, and uh, I think uh, the richness shows up when people jump in and say, "Hey, you know that was that's what got me," and and so that I'm making I've made already into your journal uh, piece. We so just talk about even if it's just one thing that uh, how has it changed anything for you? Uh, what have you? What's your personal experience about it? Okay, so here's the thing. um because this is the last session it's my in in some ways the last opportunity <laughs> to uh, have your attention i decided to put some energy into uh, um um what i don't know what to call it but something that i um, i found over the years that if if somebody asked me that here's a group do what you want with them uh what would i really do what's that uh, where would i take it all and uh, the interesting piece is this after 30 years of doing corporate work i did finally get an organization that said do what you want and uh, i did what i want and that uh, i did what i want continued for two years and uh, uh project is here Uh, her organization, and <laughs> it was interesting where I decided to take it, and I'm going to take you to that place as well, in a kind of a in a brief way. Uh, just a quick check in, uh, Rishi. Where is Shweta? She's on calls, back to back calls. She'll join in as soon as she's done. Yeah, because we got to take a group photo. Remember? <laughs> oh yes, I'll ask her as soon yeah, as she's yeah. done. Right, she's missing it already. She told me. Ah, okay, yeah. cool. Right. So here's uh, here's what we're going to do. Um, for a change, I'm going to give you a break at this one hour stage. So, Jeeves, it, it wasn't twenty minutes, right? <laughs> but great job. I didn't expect it to. I said twenty minutes. Wow, that would be brilliant. Uh, but everybody just brought that richness into it, and thanks so much. So I'm going to give you a coffee break right now. and then i'm going to pick it up from there and take it to the finish line okay great disappear welcome back everybody cameras on it's almost as though i know you <laughs> like we met okay <clears throat> you ready so what i'm going to do is to um, share with you some of the things that have been important to me over the years and they might come fast and furious and some of it is going to be ad libbing because i'm on a trip right now and uh, if you feel like you want to take notes take notes if you don't that's fine to enjoy the ride Okay. <clears throat> right. Can you get that presentation? Yeah. Okay. Have you got my screen? Now, you know, uh If you've noticed, I've been using this slacklining thing as a, a metaphor for what the journey has been like for for us. <clears throat> Now that's not me; that's you. And uh, this journey ahead is going to be your slacklining attempt. <clears throat> you've got your harness on, and the entire support system represents everything that you have learned. <clears throat> you have learned or picked up or 
uh, whatever has been delivered over the past um, so many sessions. And now it's your turn to walk. And uh, yes, I mean, I hope it's going to be scary. And uh, so here are some nuggets that for me have been important and, I'm, uh, and see if they can be important for you. If, if not, you know, just keep what you want and throw away what you don't need. And that's fine. So, um, no matter what we do in a classroom or in a family or with people we know, we know that there's one thing that's really important. And it's, and it's, it's, it's part of everything that we do as human beings. What's that word? Conversation. Conversations. Yeah? So here are some things that you might want to consider uh, while having conversations. <clears throat> and we just decided to be a little playful with it. Monica, read that out for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to translate it for you. <laughs> okay, okay, this is the Ramban effect. <laughs> When you are having a conversation with people, don't multitask. And uh, while this is just one illustration of it, I think one is, it's like, uh, you know, you've got a, oh, I don't even have my phone anymore with me right now. Your phone, don't just put it face down, put it away. Because we know that all our habits so far that have been cultivated are, if, if it doesn't buzz for 28 seconds, you kind of pick it up and say, oh, nobody loves me anymore. How can that be? And we pick it up and have a look to see if we've got a WhatsApp message or a Slack message or a mail or something. Put it away. Okay? And make that action very, very noticeable because it makes a world of a difference to people because they will notice it. And if you are getting into a conversation with anybody that you think is going to be an important one or you want it to be an important one, invite them to put their phones away and just have that, build that norm and say, okay, for the next, you know, as long as we take to finish this conversation, let's just put our phones away. We're not going to look at our phones. Is that okay with you? And then put it away. Yeah? Okay. And so for somebody who's done some study on it, they uh, realize that uh, a lot of people, and this is, I don't know how many of you are like that. I'm sure some of you are like that. It's like, we believe we can manage many things at the same time. You know what the truth is? That the brain is not capable of doing it. And what we think of as multitasking is really serial tasking one after the other. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to figure that out, you know there are exercises that you can do where you turn one hand one way and the other hand is supposed to go. Or, you know, it's like uh, some of you have done this exercise. One, two, three. Okay? Now, and the other hand does a different thing. So this hand, the left hand, goes one, two, three. Got it? So this hand is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this hand is one, two, three, four, five. You got it? Now you've got to do both hands together. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, 
six. Now do it as fast as you can. You see what I'm saying? And you'll notice that in the brain, you're directing attention to right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, one after the other. It's not, not simultaneous. And the moment you try and do something like that, the quality of your tasks drops and the intelligence with which you do those tasks also drops. So put away your phones. Somebody asks you a question, be careful that you get into this. I know you'll say, yeah, but you've been lecturing to us for 10 sessions. I know. But, I, you know, I did everything possible to make it interactive. Uh, and my lectures must have been interesting because hardly any of you bunked class. And if you did, you, you informed me beforehand, there's some difficulty, call, like Shweta is not, oh, she's back. Welcome back, Shweta. So, uh, and, you know, so don't lecture. Especially if you're a parent, children don't want lectures. Aman, can you put your camera on, please? Unless you've disappeared. Thank you very much. So just a confirmation from my son that uh, I have not been lecturing. And sometimes when I do that, then I do it, then I sit him down and I, uh, then I say, this is lecture time. So kind of make it very clear. But if somebody asks you a question, try not to uh, lecture. And the reason is that uh, when we lecture, we are too full of ourselves and we're not listening to them. Simple. And if they are coming to you with a question, then it makes sense that we give attention and give them airtime rather than hogging airtime ourselves. Also in managerial positions, somebody asks you a question, by mistake, and we say, ah, oh, this person is motivated and interested. I must give them the longest lecture possible. Cynthia, just kind of, you know, I'm not saying you do it, but you're in the corporate world and I know what it sounds like. Okay. Everybody knows something you don't. It doesn't matter how much hair you have on your head. Everybody knows something you don't. And to remember that and see what it is that you can pick up. So staying above that line and saying, okay, what is there to learn for me from what they are saying? What can I learn? Okay. Okay. All you engineers, you might know what that formula means, but Einstein certainly doesn't. <laughs> We've, we've talked about this. Use open-ended questions, use the wow really approach, uh, do whatever you can to listen to what they have to say. Um, if you ask a complicated question, you know what happens, right? First response is, huh? What? Yes. No. And that's as much as you will get. The simpler your question, remember the four S's? What are they? Simple, sharp. Short, simple, sweet, sweet. Sweet is the last one, okay? Because you will know sweet only if you use the first three. Short, 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 sharp, 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 sweet. Sharp, simple, simple, sharp, sweet. simple, sweet. Sweet. Got it. Okay? Ask questions that they know answers to. Here's, um, here's what we tend to do as educators. Funnily, most teachers ask questions that children, they think children don't know the answer to, and I'm not sure why we do it. Do you, have you felt this? Or is it just me? Yeah? We're trying to find out what they don't know. Why can't we ask them what they know? I think the answers that come will be much more interesting. We've done this, right? Open-ended, closed questions. This is just another way of looking at it. In conversations, goes a long way in enriching the conversation rather than having it your way. 
when you are listening to somebody else thoughts are going to come into your head and uh, we talked about it earlier and jc mentioned it today that 30 second death zone and after the 30th actually it's 18 seconds somebody did a study they said it's 18 seconds by the 18th second we already have something we want to say and we stop listening and to just remember that Vishwas, the body movement. Second point: let them out. Otherwise, they will interfere. Like you mean, you have to share our thoughts, or just let go of those thoughts. Out. Gone with the wind. Let them. Let them go. Not let them out. Sorry, I need to change that. <laughs> okay. Hey, I I did self promotion today. Okay. If you don't know, say so. Because it goes a long way. Because I tell you what, if you if you don't know and you say so, they will educate you. Be careful of that cliched response to somebody else's misery. Saying, "Yeah, you know what? I understand. You don't. You can never." Which was I think? Your He's just up there, or is it just me? He's not speaking. I think his screen is frozen. Satan, if you're there, please tell Vishwas to his boss. They all with them? Ah, yeah, yeah. You're back. Sorry, lost you there. So, um, to theirs, they're never the same, and you don't understand. We really don't understand what the other person has been through or is saying. Till we actually listen to them. Okay. All of us who are parents know about this. we tell our children the same thing again and again and again and again and after a while they just don't hear you and it's hard to hold back when we want something done we are attached to the agenda but i'm guessing they've already heard and and if they've not done it it's because they don't want to do it be careful about telling them one of your stories because their story triggered something in you it may not be the best time to do it okay ab uh, vishwas i didn't get him forget the detail yeah uh, it's like oh you know the other day i was uh, out on a camp and it was 3 o'clock in the morning when we reached and it was raining and this and and that what am i doing i just hijacked your conversation they don't want to listen to your story if we are there to listen to them then let them tell their story oh in that way okay but what is i think the slide is saying people care about you and what you have to say yeah they do but you don't have to go into uh, the you know the details that you know what i should have uh, actually i should have woken up at 4 o'clock instead of 3 o'clock but i didn't because uh, you know my mother always told me that i should wake up at 3 o'clock and i should brush my teeth what that's got nothing to do with the conversation but in the brain for some of us one thought triggers another and another and we get lost with it 
and those details may not be relevant to the conversation at all. Make sense? Which is why I had warned you very early, I said, if you can't say it in four sentences, you probably don't know what you have to say. And those who've been to deep know that very well. Because they ramble on, a lot of us ramble on like that. And this kind of is a reminder and saying, hey. And I, I've been actually pretty bad with some people and said, okay, the moment they start talking, I say one, two, three. Have you said what you wanted to? No, maybe there isn't anything. Sharp. This act of facilitation of working with people, there's a time to listen to that story. So you'll find, you might think at one point that some of these are in contradiction with each other. This is about how we should practice it. If somebody rambles on with their story, let them do it. They're telling you their story. After the fourth sentence, you can say, okay, what was that about brushing your teeth at 3 a.m. in the morning? Are we talking about difficulty in brushing teeth or waking up in the morning at six o'clock or whatever? And, and we can bring that conversation back, bring it, ask those questions to make it sharp, simple, understandable. Okay, is, is this distinction clear? That this is about what we can practice in our conversations. Okay. <clears throat> I want to be the Buddha, so I will keep quiet. But today I want to. <clears throat> okay. I don't think I need to add anything here, right? You know what happens Vishwas, if you, sorry. Vishwas, uh, you will be uh, sharing this slide, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're a compulsive note taker and that's what floats your boat, you're right. Right, right, right. Okay. No, because in last, uh, something was left for it's fine. I'll, I'll check it in this slide later. Okay. Yeah. okay. Have you ever had an ice cream cone? Yeah. And started telling a story and forgotten your ice cream? You know what happens, right? Uh, so, so which was a personal experience here. I think uh, a, tw a Twitter used to have that very limited features, like we can't tweet more than some word limit. That actually helped me to become very brief in my points when I express on social media platforms. So like from Facebook, it was always long posts, but Twitter, I, I understood the importance of being brief there. Yeah, Trump uses it a lot. <laughs> Maybe he just has very little to say. That might be a different reason. <laughs> okay. So that's, um, that's really one little piece. There's another piece I often share, and this is, this is important, yeah? Remember your session in the classrooms? Yeah? You understand this statement? Good. I think this is the crux of everything that we do, that what we do and who we are is not separate. And we think that what we, uh, what we teach is more important than who we are. 
and just remember to keep that personal journey alive and well and healthy and moving because uh, i think that's the heart of uh, and you will notice that uh, as you do uh, practice a little more that um, who you were affected that person a lot more than what you said have you ever had that experience uh, which was just a minute can you share some points on the uh, second part unconsciously we teach who we are yeah okay um go back to your school days what do you remember uh i remember yeah the teachers who friends exams okay um pick a teacher hmm what do you remember there's one particular teacher who used to bring in a lot of current affairs to discussions going beyond the content sharing some very interesting stories so in your brain as you're talking about it right now are you seeing the content or are you seeing the person person why it was the that the way she delivered it very in a, in a very conscious way very humorous way fun but very interesting like something very like we used to look forward to that extra bit in the classroom with the english teacher but we used to really like the part of current affairs she used to bring you just explained it to yourself so it's so then it's about a personality that you're talking right how we uh i don't like that word yeah if you want to call it personality you can uh is there another word presence of the presence that it tend to convey it's nice right i mean the presence that she brought into that room when she walked in mm yeah as anisha says being of that person cool okay now not on this is uh, oh sorry uh, is something that <laughs> i like to share i just want to be a little selfish so um, i got two stories do you want the gyan story first or the ungyan story ungyan yeah ungyan story is this yeah. in addition to the other story you were supposed to say sorry is this in addition to the other story yeah Okay, so the ungyan story. Can I get, can I get my phone? Um, this is a story before mankind. Okay, give me a. Oh yeah, oh, hold on a second. We've got uh, we've got some images for you. Hold on. Yeah, this is one relaxed session, no? <laughs> Nobody's rushing anywhere. I'm certainly not. Interesting. Chetan is furiously working away at it. This was last minute. So, so Vishwas, you keep changing your office in every class, or like background always keeps varying from class to class. Hey, I change my environment the way I change my T-shirts. <laughs> Lucky you. I know. Uh, you hey, you Varun, don't talk about it. You're in the mountains right now. Show me some beach, man. <laughs> or show me some floods or whatever. I don't know. It's it's in the part that we live in. It's been raining. Uh, we had just had a thunderstorm.
Okay. So while uh, he's still getting, are you going to? It's not safe. Yeah. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to start recounting the story anyway, and uh, and then uh, you can build uh, an image, and we'll give you another one. So this is a story about um, life before mankind. Okay, now you've got to imagine this. It's monsoon. Everything is wet. You know, it's like I don't know where you are, but uh, right now in Pune, it's kind of wet, and the mountains. Uh, are green and the rocks are slippery and every once in a while the sun comes out and it's glorious and it's one of those days and uh, these two guys the fox and the wolf what do we know about a fox cunning is cunning and the wolf yes. Sly fox, cunning. Yes. Wolf, wolf is a night howler. Yeah, but uh, but you said very quickly, sly for the fox, and what's it for the wolf? Fear, straightforward. He's really dumb. He's kind of slow in comparison. Okay, mm -hmm. and he's big. He's much bigger than the fox. So they're great friends. Okay. And, oh, there you are. <laughs> They're great friends and um, they hang out together and, uh, you know, they uh, clean each other's fur. So it's one of those glorious sunny moments. They sit, they hang out on a rock on top of a hill, uh, a green, you know, green hill. And um, they're scratching each other and uh, cleaning each other. And they're kind of lying like that. You know how animals do that, right? Those of you who have animals. And they're having a great time. And then the fox, the, um, uh, the wolf suddenly says, hey, you know what? I'm feeling something. And the fox says, what do you mean you're feeling something? He says, well, I don't know. I've, I've never felt this before. So the fox says, uh, are you hungry? No. Uh, are you missing something? No. Are you feeling sad? No. Are you feeling happy? No. Every word he uses to describe a feeling, the wolf keeps saying no. So finally, the fox says, hey, you know what? Why don't we just call this new feeling that you've got, let's say, let's call it bored. Ah, that sounds like a good word. Yeah, I'm feeling bored. Okay. So what do you want to do? I, said, I don't know. So he's just kind of, you know, the fox looking around and um, in the valley, he sees this cottage and that cottage is very well known. The cottage is, you know, it's a white and yellow and red cottage painted beautifully with a chimney and there's smoke billowing out of it. And it's the, his house has a wicked gate and you open the gate and you come in and you see these tables and umbrellas and white tables and chairs. And he usually receives people for meals because he's a great one at cooking cakes and pies and so on. So anytime there's smoke billowing out of that chimney, uh, animals come in and he serves them cake and pies and stuff. He's a great guy, very friendly chap. Everybody loves him. So the fox says, hey, you know what? Let's do one thing. Let's go down there. I'm the small fellow, so I'm going to knock on the door. And when the rabbit opens the door, you stand there big like that. And, uh, you know, he's not supposed to be wearing a hat, right? So the wolf says, yeah, I mean, why would anybody wear a hat at home? So he says, good. So he won't be wearing his hat to so ask him, why are you not wearing your hat? And before he can answer, just hold him by the neck and beat him up. He says, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So they go down, the fox knocks on the door, the wolf is standing there. The rabbit, of course, is receiving, you know, he's one of those uh, genial types, loves, uh, loves animals or whatever. And he says, hi, what can I do for you today? And the wolf says, why are you not wearing your hat? And he holds him and before he can answer, he just holds him and beats him up. Ah. So they're walking back and the fox says, how are you feeling now? Oh. I'm feeling great. 
Okay, a week later, they're sitting on top of that rock, sunning themselves, and the wolf says, uh-uh. He says, fox says, what? He says, I'm feeling that same feeling again. He says, okay, so let's go up the rabbit. You can't just beat up a rabbit again like that. I mean, the guy is surely getting smart. He says, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's just go find out. So the fox, ah, this time he said, look, if he's getting smart, if you were the rabbit, what would you do now if you saw them coming down? Wear the hat. Wear the hat. Get the hat. Absolutely right. So they go down, the fox knocks on the door, the wolf's standing there, the rabbit's got a bandage on his head and he's wearing a hat and the wolf says, are you crazy? Why are you wearing your hat at home? And before he can answer, he holds him by the neck and beats him up. How are you feeling now? Oh, I'm feeling really good. Oh, great, okay. A week later, same story, Wolf says, uh-uh, Fox says, what happened? You're feeling bored again? He says, yeah, man, I don't know what to do with this. Tell you what, let's just go down and do the same thing. Because I, every idea I give you, you say no to anyway. So now you got to remember this. Everybody is getting smarter. If you were the rabbit and you saw the fox and the wolf come down that hill towards you, what would you do? Not run away. The door not open the door. Not open the door. Not open the door, yes. You're all bad rabbits, man. This rabbit's a nice guy, remember? <laughs> so, so the fox and the wolf, he sees them coming, and the rabbit's feeling really smart, right? He says he's ah I've got these guys figured out. So he opens the door, hat in one hand, bandage on the head. He says, hi, guys, what can I do for you today? Now the wolf looks at it. And he says, oh, it's not going to work. So he says, give me some coffee. And the rabbit says, I yes. don't have coffee. Coming? Yes. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Do you like instant coffee or filter coffee? <laughs> and the wolf says, ah. Oh. Filter coffee. Okay, instant coffee. So the rabbit goes in, makes a cup of coffee, brings it to the wolf. What do you think happened? The wolf says, I wanted uh, filter coffee. You see, this is, the, this is your condition. You haven't learned yet, have you? And the rabbit forgets his hat. Oh! And what does the wolf say? Why aren't you wearing your hat? And what does he do? Picks him up and beats him. Nice. Everybody, do that. Why am I telling you the story? Because you are going to be the rabbit. With this new learning, no matter what you do, you're going to bump your head. There's always out there somebody who's going to hold you there and beat you up for missing something that you forgot. That's how life treats us. Don't worry about it. Keep learning and have fun. And just remember, there's always somebody out there to beat you up. Always some foxes out there. There's always a fox and there's always a wolf. And I don't know, while you're sitting there, you're saying, ah, I know who the fox in my life and who the wolf in my life is. <laughs> right? So have fun with it. It doesn't mean that you don't do anything new, that you don't do anything different. I'm sure a time comes when that rabbit gets so smart that the wolf doesn't know what to do and walks away bored. I wish you well on that one. So the last little piece. Damn, I think we're going to finish on time today. We have two more stories, right? One more at least. No, we will not <laughs> finish on time. <laughs> we'll not let so, you finish on time. <laughs> so I was... Uh, 
some years ago, I was invited to do something for this organization called the Global Youth Leadership Institute. And what they did was they took a bunch of 18 year olds from all over the world and took them into the, uh, the jungles of Costa Rica, which is part of the, you know, uh, what's that belt called? The green jungle area, Amazon forest. Amazon, Amazon. Yeah, okay. And, um, and we go into that forest and we spend seven days and we do this experiential thing with them. Brilliant uh, experience. On the day that we landed at Costa Rica uh, as an introduction to the entire thing, there's this guy who was gonna come and give us a, you know, a chat for an hour. And, and he came and he spoke to the group for an hour and it completely destroyed my life. And I was there, just as some of you are, at the receiving end, and I had my notebook open, thank God. My notebook was open and I took notes, and this is what I remember, and I think this has stayed with me, and I call them my four mantras. And these four mantras stay alive for me when I'm in my learning frame. So here they are. So mantra number one, get uncomfortable. Nothing's gonna to come to you in your state of comfort and joyfulness and happiness. If, we want to, if you wanna learn something, and I'm gonna use this in the context of you, or I can do it in the eye, which one do you want? You. You? Okay, if you want to learn something, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be uncomfortable. Seek such moments. And I know that many of you in your journaling have described that moment, those moments that you've had with some of the principles that we've talked about as uncomfortable, difficult to accept. Yeah, sure. But some of these things have an eternal truth that's hard to argue. So if you want to learn something, get uncomfortable. Rule no, mantra number one. Mantra two. You know, look at that screen. Look at everybody's face. Yeah? Are we same or different? Same and different. Different. Which is more? Different. Different. Here's the funny thing. We are a lot more alike than we think. If I asked you for 20, if I asked 20 people for, and asked you one question, chances are that when you do all the filtering, you will probably get four things that, and I'm saying 20 people and, and so many people thinking alike. 20 different people, but only four different ideas. How's that? Because the truth is that we are not really that different from one another. We are a lot more alike than we think. So don't be afraid to deal with numbers even if there are 60 people and you ask them one question, you'll find that when you do all the filtering, you find that there might be four or five ideas that are really different. So be careful that you, uh, that you don't think that you're too unique. I think that's the message. We think this of people within the home. We think they're really different from us. Our children, our spouses, our partners, our bosses, whoever they might be, we think they're really different. You know what? They're not. They're a lot more alike. So take that risk of presenting that idea that you think is unique with a different mind frame saying, hey, you know what? I'm sure even he or she is thinking that same idea. It's just that I'm going to, I'm going to be the one today putting it into words. So don't be afraid to speak your wonderful different idea. You'll find that other people will say, hey, you know what? I thought the same thing. 
Have you found that? Right, so we are a lot more alike than we think. Third mantra. The answers to the big problems in life, everybody has a solution. So don't let anything phase you. You may think it's a huge problem, a big problem. You know what? You have a solution. And if you don't, somebody else has a solution. Guaranteed. All we have to do is to be able to listen to them at that point in time. Everybody has a solution to the big ones. If somebody comes to you with a problem, don't get caught up in give them, giving them solutions. They already have it. Remember I told you at the beginning of the course, you already know everything that there is to know. I'm just going to give you a language that might bring some commonality together. And I'm guessing you've discovered that you knew a lot of this already, but somebody, we found somebody in some book who said something and those words, and this is a linguistic thing. So the words come alive for you. Or somebody explains them and you say, ah, I felt that before. Mantra four. And this one, I've been, I've been finding new meaning to it for the past 10 years. We don't always live by our values. So learn to forgive. And learn to forgive this thing. Okay, okay I know that I don't always live by my values. I struggle with it sometimes. Sometimes it comes in flow. I don't always live by my values. But if I kicked myself and felt guilt and shame for at every, you know, that's what we do to ourselves. We kick ourselves too much. I think we've got to learn to forgive not just ourselves, but other people as well. Just learn to forgive. I, it, it goes a long way in keeping ourselves sane and emotionally well and also helping other people come into our circle of influence. So these are my four mantras that, uh, that, I, that have stayed with me all these years. So that was the second story. Okay. What do we have? Do we have anything else? No. The, hey, damn, it's eight o'clock. Okay. <laughs> So before we finish, uh, just uh, I have something to share with you as to what's going to happen next. Um, I mentioned that uh, that first image is now you, which means that I have come across that line. We have come across that line, Madhvi and Che, who have been working on this. We've come across that line and we are safe. It's your turn. And uh, I don't know, I think we've been having a ball. That last image that I shared with you, the previous session, where there's, you know, we're doing is this dance on the thing. So here it is. <laughs> we're learning to do this. We're still on that slack line. We still are working on our balance, but damn, we are doing a dance. And we're having a jolly good time doing it. Okay, that's where we are. We're we are announcing the third course. So if you like this, you enjoyed it, feel free to, oh, maybe this is a commercial break. I don't know. So uh, feel free to talk about it to people. Please go out there on the website and give us your point of view. It is not being edited. Uh, I think we had to find the courage to say, okay, whatever people say is true for them and therefore must be true for everybody else. Please go out there and write your two bits if you can. We greatly appreciate it. Um, some of you who have uh, put in stuff, you have not put your photographs. Um, Put your most wonderful, lovely photograph out there that you like the most. I'm sure everybody else will like it too. But it lends a certain credibility to the whole thing. Otherwise, I'll have to find... Otherwise, we're going to pick a photograph from here <laughs> and put it out there. So are you ready uh, with your smiley faces right now? Are you ready? Bharat, don't look so serious, dude. Yeah, that's it. 
Are we ready? Okay, you can see yourself on your mark, get set, go. Ta-da! Yippee! Okay. Commercial break two. Yeah, um, I've never done this topic before. And every deep that I've ever finished, I walk away saying, damn. But, you know, as you've recognized, the course already covers so much. And I, and I just felt that transference was a little, is a little more difficult to understand. Uh, do you know what transference is? Nice. So you're all potential candidates. So here's what it means. You know, we do all this stuff, right? Now, the whole point is that the objective of education, any education is to get our students to be able to find meaning for it in their real lives. Yes? That is transfer. So you're transferring what we do. And if you listen to the conversation when, uh, when Jeeves was, hey, I don't know why I'm calling you Jeeves, but <laughs> okay, when Jeevan was presenting that whole thing, you all said, yeah, this, this, this was alive for me. This was real for me. This is what I did. And, you, and many of you have already shared moments in which you transferred some of the stuff or you applied some of the stuff and have a real life experience of a concept that we talked about. Raise your hand if even one of the things we talked about you have encountered or practiced or consciously put into your life. You see, everybody's hands went up. That is transference. And I, and I didn't consciously do anything yet about transference, but we need, well, actually I did, but you don't know what it is, right? So there's a whole bunch of things that we can do before we encounter our group, during the encounter, and after the encounter, and when I say encounter the word, it could be an experience, it could be a classroom session, no matter what it is that you do. You can do stuff before, during, and after. After. Before, during, during after. after. And after. And each time we do something consciously as educators in any one of these three areas, the greater are the chances of, for people to be able to take it into their own lives. That's what transfer is. Okay? So, um, I have regretted not doing it long enough and I decided to risk it. And what this essentially does is open up the possibility of at least 800 people who have been through different uh, courses that I've run. So around 600 deepers and another 100 people doing this, uh, the online thing. Opens it up. Um, I'm doing, I don't know if I'll do it again and again. As long as I'm excited about it, I will do it. I'm really excited about doing it. Uh, this time, you'll notice that the excitement comes through through the neon colors. And we're going to keep that as a theme throughout uh, in, in the visualization. <laughs> this guy decides to do it. I just do the thing here. He does the thing there. And uh, so if you feel like you want to be part of it, um, I'm limiting the number to a more conversational group. There'll be a maximum of only 30 people for this. Um, there'll be a lot of conversations, lots of breakout times, lots of uh, uh, stories, lots of whatever. I, I'm just going to have fun at it, whichever way works for me. I think you will enjoy it too if you want to be part of it. That's commercial item two. There's a lot of stuff out there. I mentioned this earlier. Um, 
these are all friends who've allowed us to print their books here. If you went to buy these in the US or anywhere else, they would cost you upwards of $25. Okay, do some math for me. How much is $25? Two thousand rupees. Great. That book that you see, that journey to the caring classroom, is about forty dollars. We are making it available to you at all of them are anywhere between two hundred to seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred rupees, inclusive of postage or something like that. So if you um, you may not have, I know I'm a Gyan ka bhandar, <laughs> but you may not have me all the time. But these guys have put some brilliant stuff into those books. Please make use of it. Okay? And they are, I, uh, anyway, when uh, the authors saw them, they said, damn, these are better than the original quality that we printed in the US. So, uh, what Indians do best is copy really well, right? <laughs> So we just took the PDFs and made a fantastic production out there. So uh, enjoy the books. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a bunch of tools that you can use. So the uh, reflection cards that you've been responding to, a set of that is available. There's a set of two kinds of reflection cards, image cards. They're different. Uh, there's a bunch of alphabet cards and at some point in time, uh, I can send you information on how you can run alphabet card activities, which means that you can use them from at whatever age they learn the alphabet. It's a great way for getting children to learn alphabets in a hands-on full body and mind way. Okay, so do take a look at that store. We hadn't put it out in a big way because uh, there was trouble with uh, the courier services but we figured out a way now and things have opened up. So uh, our, so we take orders and then on Tuesdays, it gets shipped out. So uh, do take advantage of everything out there. There's also a play bag, which comes with a book that allows you, that gives you about 120 activities in that book. So with all those books to put together and the play bag, you can, you have access to about a thousand activities straight away. Okay, so just saying that it's available, have fun with it. I am done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm here. If, if there's something that you still want to talk about, those who have to leave. Vishwas, you what about here. your two day outdoor thing? Uh, when is it going to happen? Huh, so. Who, who asked that question? Not Rishi, I hope. Preeti. Preeti. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, I, damn. This is when my heart gets really soft. Okay. So uh, forgive me if I overstep myself. We were, so I will announce it. Once things open up, and the only thing that can prevent, um, so the only thing that can get us beyond that point is for us all to be brave and not be afraid of something that we can't see. How we feel and think about COVID has a lot to do with the immune system. Don't be afraid. In the past week, I've had these wonderful conversations with people who are in the thick of exchanging stuff, shopkeepers. Mm. And the guy tells me, we were in a shop yesterday and he tells me, I said, hey, you know what? You got 10 people here servicing about 500 people every day. None of you has fallen sick? He says, no. I said, what's your story? What's your formula? So he said that uh, I think people who are afraid get it. He said, every one of us has gone home as we normally do during the summer holidays, which was the peak of the COVID scenario. 
we went home for a month and we came back and we didn't bring anything and we didn't fall sick. I said, wow, that's brutal. I mean, what a mindset to carry around. And he says, yeah, for you, I will put my mask on. But do you think I wash my hands for every person that I serve? If I did, my hands would wear out and I would use too much soap anyway. So don't be afraid. And if that state comes through and things open up, I will announce it and I will give you a few months. I know many of you are not from Pune, but we will be doing this somewhere around Pune. So just make it a holiday. You're going to need it at that by that point of time. <laughs> so I will give you two months notice. Come in anyhow you want. Let's go out there uh, to the Magic Bus Training Center, which is between Pune and Mumbai. And let's, and if you want two days, I'll give you two days. You want three days, I'll give you, I don't care. Yeah. You need condition and there's no charge for that. Three days in two, we need three The only days. money that we will be paying will be for paying to the place. And that is usually, uh, so far has been 2000 rupees for two days and one night. Everything included. So I will announce it and at that point in time, whoever can come, just come. Let's have some fun. Please do it in 2021 so that I can come. Okay. I don't see it happening before December. Okay. Then okay. Yeah. So yes, 2021, maybe earlier in the year because uh, then summer again gets too hot or during the monsoon, whatever. I don't care if it's five years from now. One of these days, if you stay in touch, you will get an invitation. Okay? Right. At the end of this course, uh, we will be sending you a lot of goodies. And, you know, they're soft goodies, not hard goodies, soft goodies. Um, so everything that you've seen in the slides, every model, everything that we've covered, we're going to send you a pack of it so you can see how it was sequenced one by one visually. Okay, so you, you'll, get a, uh, you'll get a pack of uh, stuff. Yeah, great. I'm done. Did I say that before? The Slack group will be open, right? The yeah, Slack. Slack. Yeah. So here's the thing. We might close uh, the group that we have. And you will then join the turbulence group. And uh, enjoy the turbulence because people keep throwing in stuff there and conversations happen. So uh, I'm assuming you've already got an invitation to that. No? Yes. Okay. So if you haven't but, already yeah, got yeah. it, we send it again. So uh, after about a week or 10 days, uh, I don't know, Madhvi, what do you think? How long will it take for you to figure that one out? Yeah, uh, in a week. Um, a week's time. Um, so somebody asked for the audio of the sessions and uh, we will make the audio available to you. And we'll put it up in class. Thank you for this. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So uh, Slack will be open for uh, Slack will be open for uh, what we said. Yeah, um, so that will be open once you join Turbulence. Um, maybe for the next, what, one month? Because we might forget stuff, right? So we'll keep, it, we'll keep everything open for a month. Okay. Anything else you need to know? Vishwas, the video will be available for a month or for a week, the YouTube videos? Month. Month, okay. Thank you. And uh, Vishwas, 
it would be unfair after this uh, marathon to not give you time to rest before you blow your brains again <laughs> and what about the certificates vishwa should we send by email how is it shared part of the package my friend ah sure yep beautifully designed oh. certificates yeah and how to get in touch with you chetan uh, on turbulence can i have your email id is to it's all there oh. uh, you know one thing i realized was that um, once you're on slack this email thing is now outdated yeah <laughs> you know you can have thread conversations and stuff like that almost everything is available in slack and we just i'm just finding that um, <coughs> i was able to get out of whatsapp which is brilliant once you're in slack people are a little more mindful about how they communicate and what they communicate and i think it's becoming the four s thing right <laughs> you're getting a lot sharper with it and uh, more fun yeah but we are available we are on call any time you want so uh like i said the only thing you do not have permission to call me for is which activity shall i use <laughs> <laughs> good great everything else is open to conversation <laughs> yeah, how about connecting each other for the developments and applications that we do after this and clearing each other so some kind of uh, so to mean connecting and how the group okay can... so here's the thing yeah i know i mean the suddenly occurred to us so pardon our short sightedness if you guys feel like you want to keep the group alive for a longer time and if that's what you're going to do kabir yeah then uh, then just keep the group alive that's all we don't need to shut it yeah that sounds good okay yes that is we can know each other now because so many things that we learned i, I personally i learned it's there in idea and it takes time to sing and work and partially we are practicing but something that we want to check hey, i did it and what you have felt and what you did so that kind of sharing yes you know what that means right then yes yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so we uh, so we'll keep the group alive Yeah. Okay. Vishwas, uh, if I may, maybe Chetan can share uh, what slides was he using, like uh, what software he was using. Very really fascinating, like the way it was zooming in, zooming out. Yeah. What was that? Hey, trade secret, man. <laughs> <laughs> We were using Prezi. In fact, I I did some workshops because the last time we did, first time we did a lot of people loved it, so I did like some online. Uh, Just like exposing people to how to use it, and I'll share the link to that if you want to see sure, how. Sure, sure. Amazing. It's called, it's called That's great. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Virtual coffee included. <laughs> Any story that we still have here that you want to share with us? there too many you need to be a little more specific <laughs> vishwas we are also wired to uh, 8:30 as a session end timing i think uh, none of us want to go it's still 9 minutes to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i think i'm just setting a bad example man I, the other group uh, go on till 9 o'clock because the people who just hang around they say we just want to chat okay great so uh, i try and make myself available and if it's a story yeah i'll give you a story but you got to take some uh, responsibility for what you want to hear i'm guessing there's enough stories in my head what kind of situations oh by the way uh, you got the assessment and i'm just curious how many of you are running away from it no planning to work on it Oh. It's a good way to recall everything. Yep. Yep. Not running away. Need some time to do it. That's it. You got a month. Yeah. Definitely going to do it. Yes. 
Yeah, just remember. Uh, but, open to outcome. Maybe I have to read the content more, but but most of this is taken from a Western experience and contextualized or Indian experience. Do we have some Indian emerging authors also who do research on facilitation and Yeah, Maybe that's you, true. you can that's do it with us. Like you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying. Um, I think uh, too many people have been after me saying, okay, look, you just do small pieces. And they finally got me to start a blog. And I did. And I wrote a, a few things. And, I, and when I read back, I say, wow, that's brilliant stuff. Even though I say so myself. But, uh, and then maybe that's the way things will come together. So over time, uh, I'm just going to be writing on little topics and then put that together and see what emerges, comes from there. Um, but just remember this, Eastern or Western, we are human beings. Same behavioral issues. Same problems. Just that the context differs alone. So only in that... Uh, since I was, I was sharing. Oh, really? You found that? Like, I had an experience in that way in my first job. It was, there was a, like, a lot of borrowing that happened, but the context was missing. And then in my second job, it that context came in very well. Like the persons who were delivering it uh, contextualized it. So that is that gap. That happened. So. Okay. Cool. All right. Anything else you want to say or ask? I would just like to uh, thank everyone. I have to actually go into another office call. Um, so I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity. Uh, I have enjoyed the last 10 sessions. I tried to do as much journaling I could. I've been really, like, I know that I've not done it as much as I probably could have, um, but I have enjoyed these sessions with all of you, learned a lot from everyone, and uh, hope to keep connected. Vishwas, it's always been a pleasure, and uh, I will look out for more opportunities, um, you know, to learn more from you. And maybe yeah, I'm I'm someone who's going to require like ten, like five or ten years, but uh, I would like to continue on that journey. Twenty, ten, twenty, <laughs> but I will be uh, continuing on the journey. So thank you, everyone, and uh, bye. Have a good night, bye, everyone. Thank, thank you, Prasanna. Thank you. So, which was, I'll also have to take a leave, but I want to thank you and and all the participants. I really enjoy the I really enjoy the small group discussions we broke out into. I remember our we made shoelace discussions. It was very it was, it is, it's, it's an amazing group. Like uh, a great facilitator, a, a, a great group, and and actually I was hoping that my presentation would be rich today because I was hoping. The group will come in and add points, and they actually did that too. So, willing to share things. So, I really want to thank, and it's been an amazing time. And thank you for that one month. So, I will try to cover as much as possible in one month, and definitely do that assignment too and uh, submit it. So, thank you to you, thank you to Chetan, to Madhu, so, uh, to Madhavi, and uh, thank you to everyone. And we'll be in touch on Slack for sure. Cool. A quick message to Aman. Please collect the food. Sorry? <laughs> He's waiting. He's waiting outside. You got a Aman? call? Aman? Aman? Did Aman? you get a call right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. <laughs> there's, there's good food waiting for you at home. So. <laughs> you really didn't plan for 8.30 today, Vishwas. <laughs> Yeah, also oh, we all make mistakes, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much. So here's how it works. So I'm not disconnecting till everybody disconnects. So um, I'll be the last. See, 
I'll, I'll die with the ship, sink with the ship kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, I thank everybody, particularly Vishwas. Uh, this, this was a different experience for me. In fact, it's not what I will I'll do with this later, but I'm so contented that I have already done something with me in my planning. So this 10 sessions during this period was a gradual organic transformation in me, in the process and the concept. So, so I'm sure that I have already started the journey. So it's not 10 years, it's already there in me because I joined for this because of it, because I knew the concept shared partially by my friends, but I really wanted to get it. So I have started the journey and I would like to be with you to continue it. And I'm so happy. I may leave uh, because I'm getting continuously called. So yeah, you must because otherwise I won't be able to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you everybody. We'll keep you that. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Vishwas. It was really experiential online. Like, it didn't, uh, for me, it didn't make any difference offline, online, actually. It was, uh, I could experience everything, whatever you're supposed to deliver it, actually. Wow, brilliant. So, Thank you. That says a lot about, more about you than me. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. I did experience everything. So, Wonderful. and much. It, it's like uh, yeah I'm, I'm also trying it out so yeah big thank you and thanks everyone actually thank you Bye. Vishwas I gotta go as well thank you so much it's been a lot of learning I do have a lot of queries and doubts which I will probably contact you and uh, a lot of things that I've learned which I'll try to you know implement and improve but thank you all thank you for all the discussions the breakout sessions it was nice having uh, knowing all of you so thank you bye I gotta go to another meeting so thank you Bye -bye. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vishwas. Even I got to go. Thank you, everybody, for a great learning experience. And especially for, uh, you know, providing a way to think. Uh, I think this just adds that dimension to our existing experiences. And uh, I hope that I can, uh, you know, use this and implement it uh, in my work that as I go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I wanted to say bye. Uh, uh, so I'm not at all. Um, so I have been told about Vishwas's programs long back, Jashri, my friend told me when I was in Delhi. And I kind of avoided um, it at that time because of some reasons. And then I'm a total, un, you know, I don't like this online thing. And I'm actually doing a lot of online um, things right now. It's so, so um, two-dimensional for me. And uh, so being an artist, it's extremely two dimensional. And that's why um, I want to spend time with Vishwas in a more three dimensional approach. Uh, so uh, that I get more of a feel of uh, whatever, because it, right now it's all in the mind and I'm not a very mind kind of a person. Um, so um, I'm waiting for the experience to go a little more deeper. Yes. Yes, yes, sure. Anytime. Yeah. Bye. So, but it's nice to also have a two dimension. At least it's not only one dimension. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know what a one dimension <laughs> is. <laughs> so we, I don't know what's the fourth dimension and I don't know what's the one dimension. So two dimension is still safer. Yeah. Bye guys. Uh, yes, I would like to thank you very much you all. It was great to have this little community and meet every Thursday. And it's kind of sad that it's not going to happen next Thursday. I hope we're going to keep in touch. It was really nice to participate in all discussions and learn 
from all of you. And I learned tons and I cannot wait to go on the field and apply it now is in a regular life but i think like having a bunch of students around and you know all the time being conscious and aware of everything and posing and this is all that i'm really looking for so uh thank you so much and i see you around don't forget the rabbit story yeah <laughs> thank you have fun yeah, so for me, Vishas, as you know, that for me, I always want, wanted to grow firstly myself and then be a better facilitator. So yeah, your first um, four days class, which I took in Delhi and now this is, a, I can see a great change. That time I was so confused and I was so sad that you were leaving and I was telling you now what, now what I'm going to do, I cannot come to Pune. But thankfully, it happened online. I'm really happy because Pune was not happening. It was not at all happening. But this is, I'm now I'm not confused. Now I'm actually, I have so much to grow more on, which I al already have. And if I will grow on whatever I already have, maybe that, that, that will do better than, rather than running for more and more. Firstly, I need to grow on whatever I've grasped right now. I, I have to keep a good command and say on that. So yeah, thank you. But I, surely I will eat your head more and you'll see a lot more of me in future. <laughs> and to all, I'll miss you all. I can't believe it's the last class. We won't be sitting like this again. <laughs> Funny how even two dimensions can get you feeling a little, you know, a little something. <laughs> I think speaking of which, we could possibly connect again informally amongst ourselves. I think we could set something up and share it. And that would be nice. That's a nice invite and I take the invite. It's a good invite. So here's the, here's the thought that if at some point in time in the future you say, okay, we want to get together uh, and you create enough purpose, I think we can set up uh, something and, you know, yeah, I would uh, about stuff, clarify stuff. Uh, it doesn't need to end here. We just see very often we see the last day as the last day in life. But we're going to keep, all keep living. And uh, if you feel that uh, you want to gather again uh, to chat about stuff, we can make it happen. Yeah, we can have an online reunion. Like we used to go to school reunion. <laughs> But it has to be purposeful. It's, uh, otherwise, we'll just be having water in our glasses and say cheers. Nah, no fun in that. Obviously purposeful. Yeah. So, bye. 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 Okay, now it's my turn. I've Yay! been waiting. <laughs> yeah, everyone is speaking so i'm not getting the chance to speak anyway thank you so much sir i've learned so so much like in each session and i'm so grateful to you and to marcy and shashwat obviously because that's how i know about you and besides um i won't get rid of you very fast because you'll see me more like I, i'm sure i'm gonna do the next session and deep in 2021 and i'll be coming back to pune so of course i'll meet you that's for sure and yeah, so I won't get rid of you that fast. And yeah, thank you so I much, sir. Can't wait to get rid of you. <laughs> you can't get rid of me that fast either. So thank you, everyone. It was so good. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye bye. Take care. Ship is sinking. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, I will go next. Yeah, I've been hanging around hoping that there will be some discussions. So I, I think uh, we are not going to have any more discussions, right? I mean, if you guys are going to have any discussions, no, then I will also hang around. Yeah. Right. So uh, thank you, Vishwas. I'll, I'll take leave as well. It was a fantastic experience. I learned a lot. It expanded my horizons. And uh, I really look forward to uh, more such sessions. And like I mentioned a, a moment ago, I really look forward to connecting with the cohort as well i think if we can connect uh, informally once in a while to uh, do a reality check that would be really really nice i mean 
I, I would look forward to that. And you've been a wonderful group. And thank you so much for all the learning. Uh, thank you, especially Vaishnavi, for being very vulnerable uh, when you did the role play for our benefit. So I wanted to thank you and uh, pretty much everybody for having been very vulnerable. So I'll take leave now. I hope to be in touch. See you around. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I think I'm just going to say a big thanks. Um, I came into this uh, without any expectations and without actually prior, um, I mean, I didn't even know what the course was uh, going to cover. And, um, and and I'm still sort of assimilating and, you know, processing a lot of things we've learned. And it's just weird when, I mean, I, I was on a holiday last week and, um, you know, something happened with my kid and suddenly, um, you know, the phrase about how you spoke about how, you know, your mistakes are not others' mistakes came in. And it's, it's just, it's just mind blowing the way how some of these things sort of, you know, you become conscious of it and that sort of makes it so beautiful. Um, so I'm from a place where I wanted to learn. I think I'm in a place where I'm really enjoying whatever I've heard so far. So yeah, thank you so much for that, Vishwas. And thanks everybody for, um, yeah. Hanging in there. Yeah, I, I should have said that earlier. Thanks everybody for hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye. And hope to stay in touch. Bye. Okay. Um, thanks a lot, Vishwas. I think uh, I attended this one hour uh, online uh, meeting that happened a long time, but actually I missed it. I had registered and I couldn't uh, see it, but I saw the recording and I really felt there is immense learning for me if I join. And I was actually very desperate to join this course. And I know there was some issue in payment and all. And I was really hoping that I get a seat, you know. Um, I think this 10 weeks has been a very enriching journey. I think we have learned so much. I can't even believe oh. it, you know. It, okay, I have learned so much. And so much of my perspectives have shifted in these sessions. I used to look forward to Thursdays. That, oh, I don't know what I learned today. So I'm going to miss that. I have to do something to ensure I keep learning on my own without these sessions. But I'm really grateful to you. And in a way, I'm very grateful to uh, COVID because if COVID was not there, online version looks like, because you told you don't like online. So this would have never happened. And for me to come to Pune, I don't think it would have been possible. So... I'm really grateful for the universe for having this online course, you know, for a lot of people who can't, you know, uh, maybe come to Pune. So, right. um, I mean, I did some stuff that I never imagined would be possible. I mean, uh, uh, how, how I'm feeling right now is just an indication of how enriching it has been. Yeah. I think for me, uh, what an educator is has shifted. Like that's the main thing I'm, uh, taking like how I look at educator that self has shifted um, and I really enjoyed interacting with everyone with different perspectives uh, it really triggered new ideas new thoughts yeah thanks everyone so thank you everybody um, it was it was a great session for me as well um, and uh, I think um, when it came to interactions, the best part was uh, when I opened myself up in the breakout room, I think I had an opportunity with you, Madhu, uh, in the breakout rooms. And uh, not that I didn't feel safe with 25 people in front of me, but um, the less of the people, the greater the uh, openness and the comfort, uh, comfort level. Um, I've, I've learned a lot from all of these interactions and uh, can't wait to see what, uh, how, I can, how I can take it forward and implement it in my life. So thank you, everybody. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I would thank Vishwas and everyone and uh, Initially, the reason I joined this course was different because I was working in Pachala and I thought uh, it would help me a lot with uh, 
handling students and going about with that. But uh, before I joined, uh, before the session started, uh, I was not working there anymore. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this course now? But later when it went on and on and uh, I uh, learned a lot and most of the things, whatever, whatever I, I have been through this course, I am uh, using it in my everyday life. And I can see a lot of changes within me and within my uh, family and uh, the other relations. That's a great change for me and that's amazing. And I can see where uh, I can draw a line even between uh, my kids and they have also understood uh, how, uh, how good or uh, useful it is to draw a line. And they have started doing that. And that's so amazing for me to know. And thank you so much, Vishwas. And bye, all of you, take care. Um, thank you. Uh, I think, um, uh, like for me, the meaning of uh, like, you know, educator has kind of shifted by being part of, of this program. One is that I'm taking like a lot of language and understanding uh, as a young person being in this space right now. Uh, I'm, I think I'm also understand, like I also understood that it's not about being like an educator, but, you know, just as a space holder around whoever I choose to be and, uh, you know, interact with what, you know, what is it that I want. Uh, from that relationship, from that conversation, that engagement. I think that has shifted a lot through the conversations. And uh, I'm definitely like in the place where like I'm not feeling like it's the end. Like I'm like, you know, it's it's it's, it's the beginning for me because uh, like just the program has, one was that I was in a participant space after a very long time. Uh, it just made me reflect so much about, you know, my learning abilities, what, you know, what, what truly brings learning to me. And that's why I'm feeling that, you know, it's, it's just a beginning for me. Uh, and I'm, I'm also looking like just the online experience in ways I felt at so many times I felt, oh, it was more, you know, oh, I so wish, you know, it, you know there could have been, you know, something in, in physical space that all of us could have experienced together. So really craving for that as, as we kind of come together like this for the last time. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Everybody is happy. Oh, we are going to sync with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. One, two, three. Bye.